Hey, this is Max at 343 Labs. We're a music production school based in New York City, Berlin, and online. And today, I'd like to show you a clip by one of our instructors, John Selway, which is taken from 343 TV, which is right here on our channel several days per week. Now, if you want to watch the full stream, head over to studio.343labs.com, the link in the description, which is our new producer hub where you can meet other producers, get free content, collaborate, and get feedback on your music. Enjoy the clip. Let's just talk a little bit about that as we get started with uh, our track that we're working on. So that's not it, that's it. Do you remember what this yeah, sounds like? It's been a little while. Yeah, not really, to be honest. <laughs> cool. If I recall, it's quite heavy. This is quite banging. Like we've got a banging jacking beat to, to turn into a track. So let's see what this sounds like. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is good. I like it. I'm just gonna dance to this for like <laughs> Alright, that's that's peak time. Yep, for sure. Now what are we gonna do with this? Uh, well, we have, I guess the main hook is that um, that's that distorted synth. And um, we don't need, I don't know, we could either keep it simple and just make like a rhythm track. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, we need a little bit more, like maybe another sequence that changes over time. Right. Um, I'm thinking maybe, about it. We this, this sound, that main heavy distorted sound, we found just randomly going through presets. And I think, you know, we were talking about how do you make a hook or whatever. And sometimes you just stumble upon things that work. And also, also this hook, for example, we can just filter up and down. So that's so true. So, and so, so we have some things to, to work with here. So this sound. Yes. There's, there's sub in it. There's a lot of bass in it. But it also has like kind of a lead bright element and it's also percussive. I mean, that happens a lot in techno where one sound will serve the purpose of many different instruments. Um, I, I took a look inside of the preset. Where did it go? It's in this rack. Oh, and I've got, a, I've got an operator in there layered to give it some fullness and low end. Um, but just this pigment sound. It's kind of a complex sound and I, it, it's a little bit hard to tweak. I don't want to Did break you, it though. Like that's that's a thing. Like tweaking the parameters of this. It, no, I, I, no, no, no. Yeah. Let's let, let's just use an external filter on top okay. of this. Okay. So and, and and that way we don't touch the sound. You know. I think that makes sense. We're kind of kind of treating it as if it's a sample in a way. Yeah. That, and so we're not going to modulate every single parameter of the synth because since I didn't make this sound, I feel like it, it might just we might lose what's really good about it if we start fooling around I, too much. Totally agree. All right, so let's so let, let's let's just get started. Uh, did you compress the sound yet? Uh, yeah, it's got uh, some EQ and compression on it. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, I package it a little bit because um, you don't want to have the spikes of, of volume and stuff. Right. I'm not too worried about um, the mix right away. I want I, if that's another thing. Um, I I talk about electronic music and techno and certain styles. The mixing and the composition and the sound design all kind of happen at the same time. Yes. Because sometimes if you make a track and then you go back and then adjust the whole mix level thing and do all the EQs to clean it up, you lose something. So in this case, I like the raw energy of it. And I know it's not perfectly like compressed and EQ'd, but I like it. So I'm, I don't want to mess with it too much. Okay. Uh, I'm fine with that. And that's pretty basic. It's the that's easiest thing in the world you can do. And I... Cool. Let's hear what that sounds like with the beat. Sounds awesome. That already Ooh. could just be the beginning of the track. Yeah. All right, so sometimes Ooh. it's just a little too easy, Christian. This, yeah, but this is all you need. I mean, I mean, like it depends what kind of track you're looking for, but with a track of this energy, we don't need much more. I mean, like it depends if you want to go more commercial, you would add some rave sounds and stuff. But mm. 
I feel no need. I mean, this hook is, is strong uh, in itself, and um, yeah. it carries the track. You know, I think I think it's fine. But but what I would add is maybe um, maybe use a eight or eight ride or um, that we can put a flange on so things change over time. What do you think about that? On the on the. Uh... I'm one of the percussion side. I'm sorry. I was just reading the chat. You said an 808 okay. or you want a ride yeah, symbol? Yeah, yeah. Let's add a ride symbol. That, right. and we're, hold we're that thought. Put it in right. Okay. Uh, hold that thought. Um, at the same time, it, we're kind of juggling two things here. We're making a track together and you're seeing our dynamic together as collaborators. And I'm at the controls, right? I'm the one with the computer. I'm doing the live stream. You know, I'm, I'm, I've got the sounds, right? And then Christian yeah. is remote, right? And he might be in the same room with me, but we still have a similar dynamic in the same room. And Christian is perfectly capable of sitting down at a computer with Ableton Live and making beats and making bass lines and laying ideas down, right? We, well, that, we in, our, in our relationship, sort of traditionally, I've taken the controls a lot because off, most often we were working in my studio, but also... I think, I mean, would, do you think it's safe to say, like, especially early on, like, I would do things a little faster in the beginning, and so I just ended up kind of jumping in? Is that kind of... No, would... well, you, you you were always technically more inclined than me. You know, my, you're one of the first people who I know that started working with um, just software programs making music. You know, you mm. used fru Fruity Loops back in the days. Sure. And, and, and you know, you, you're teaching this right now. That's just, <laughs> you know, hello. <laughs> So that's you know, our, that, you're, that, you're good. You're good at this. And obviously. that's part of the thing about yeah. talking about collaboration is like, eat, what are your strengths and your weaknesses? I mean, I think uh, Silvano Cortazar here asked this question or talk about your strong skills and weak skills. And that's kind of what what we're getting at here is that, you know, we each have things that we're really good at. And then we want to find out what those things are and then fit them together in a way that works for us. Yes. Um, Martin Crockett is asking, do you find that two collaborators work works better than three or other i think it depends on what you're going for i i think yes because uh, when you have too many people in the room uh just it's, making decisions get, you know is not very concise and uh, just two people if the two people have a good good uh, synergy good workflow it goes much faster than having uh, three four people right but then what I, about I bands it. That's true. Hey, hey, I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's just saying, <laughs> in, in my opinion, you know? Yeah, you know, I, I think, too, is def the more variables there are, the more difficult it's going to be. I mean, I played in a band in high school in the beginning of college. We were a, was a, a ska, kind of punk, uh, hardcore rock. I don't know. It was all sorts of stuff. And uh, we, all, we had epic band disagreements. And then actually... Uh, this is a funny question from our friend Abe. What happens when you strongly disagree in a collab? And oh. I think he's asking that question because he knows something about us, probably. Uh, no, no, it's, it's funny. It's funny. I, um, I remember this was like 20 years ago. John and I were working on a track and we got into a strong physical, you know, we got, we we got into a fight. We, we yelled no, at each no, other. No, but no, we got, we got into a fight over a stupid hi-hat. You know, like, should this be an 808 or 909? And we ended up arguing for like 10, 15 minutes, you know, and it just kind of like dragged everything down. But in time, I've learned that uh, to not to focus more on the big things mm -hmm. and let this let the small things go. And then, you know, but this is also growing up. We, we were very young back then. And sure. we just want, we just wanted to bring our points across. And we were but, probably uh, exhausted and hung over. Well, we were, <laughs> yeah, we were hung over more, more often than not. Yeah, or, but, or, but, uh, or maybe we know. hadn't eaten dinner yet. And so we were hangry. <laughs> All, yeah, m many variables. Simple Sam says thumb wrestle for it. So next time we have a disagreement, we'll just, you know, <laughs> whoever wins gets to choose. Oh, rock, paper, si rock, rock, paper, scissor, huh? These are fun questions. This is good. All yes. right. Let, let's listen to this again. So we're going to uh, add another element here, I guess. Well, let's listen to what we've got with the beats. So this is this is all the drum sounds. So you're saying a ride cymbal with a flanger? It, yeah. We need I'm not going to argue with you. I think I know it's going to work. There's no point. <laughs> there's no point at all in arguing with you about that yeah but we stopped arguing i don't know a good 10 years ago i think i would say you know it's like I, I, yes it's like 
but when you're young, when you when you're just kind of starting out, you know, you're very ambitious. You you you're very passionate. Mm-hmm. I'm still pa- we're still passionate, sure. but we're just more more relaxed now. You know, Definitely. and this makes this makes collaborating much more easy when when you don't have anything to prove. I, I feel, and um, I've collaborated as have you with many other people too. And one thing I want to say, I've learned so much um, from from different artists. You know, I also last time I was in New York, I worked with Harry Romero, who was a fantastic producer, a really nice person. Oh, I'd love and, to have um, him on one day. That'd be great. You have to you get think him. he would do it. <clears throat> yeah, hundred percent. All right. And, and and at one point, we made like three tracks in two days or four tracks. And and then I told him, hey man, I really like your workflow. You work as fast as me because I work really fast too. Mm. And then he said something really interesting. He said, you know what? We've been around long enough to 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 um, to identify when something is good and move on. Yeah, definitely. And that, that comes with practice and, and yes, experience. Yes, yes, yes. Because a lot of um, producers they doubt themselves and they mm. end up end up fiddling around in one sequence for like two three hours, um, where where it might have been perfect from from the very beginning. You know, Absolutely. So, and there's definitely you know, times when I've made something and I'm like, I'm not sure if this is good and then I'll fix it or I'll change it or whatever. And then I'll come back and then I listen to it again. And I'm like, well, the first one was really the best one. I should have just gone with that and moved on instead of making a big deal out of it. So even when you're working by yourself, that's something that you need to kind of remember that sometimes your original inspire in, the, the inspiration you had for your first idea. Just go with that. Yes. You know? Yes. It keep the workflow. You know, as long as you're happy, just, just move on, you know, so, cool. you know, but it's also like what you said, it's also important to experiment a little bit. You know, it's, I'm not saying that uh, fiddling around is a bad thing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so, so, sometimes it does get better. Anyways, let's move on. Let's, let's, yeah. So there's a, there's a 909 kit loaded up in here already. So I can just, there it is. Okay. And I think this this kit already has some effects added to it, so I'll just tweak oh, oh, what's there. What about using the uh, nine, uh, 808 instead of 909? Oh, so because something we, thinner. Yeah, because all of our other drum sounds are kind of 909. They're, yeah. So, okay. So let's do that. Let's, let's find ourselves. Mix it up. Mix it up a little bit. Let's find a ride, or just I mean, you know, like a thinner, high, free, uh, different frequency range. High at is, is good for the mix tone, you know. That one's a little soft sounding somehow. Let's just look, take the the basic 808 kit from from live. I'm not going to use anything fancy, and uh, it's just easier to get going this way. We'll have to we'll have to process this a little bit, but yeah. But what do you think? Eighth notes, quarter notes, quarter notes. What eighth? Eighth, eighth, eighth. Sorry. How about because if you if you if, if you want to put a flanger on it, it needs to be regular, you know. Oh, I see. You Otherwise, want to have that kind of sweeping up and down white yes, noise yes, yes, sort yes, of yes, 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 effect. Going Six on. to sixteenth, I would say. That might be too much. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And the attack is a bit strong, so I guess maybe we distort it. With sampled, I, I do this with sampled can... rides sometimes. A lot of times you'll hear the ride like re-trigger or the sound re-trigger. I want to. I want them to overlap so that it sounds all kind of whooshed, whooshed out. Exactly, like. exactly. And then, but is, you do that by cutting off the the attack. Hold on. I'm going to be really nerdy right now. And this is where Christian starts to get annoyed at me. Like, what is he doing? No, what no, are you, no. Why are you? <laughs> you hear it? What if you they're make, like, what if, they're what detuning if you make, a little bit. I know, but what if you make the attack a little softer as well? Oh, okay. You, you roll up the attack a little bit. Better, right? We have to hear what it sounds like with the beat. Okay. 
Okay. Good. And now a flanger. Not using again. I'm just use, going with what's easy today. I'm using all live devices. It's so much faster. Uh, of course. Pitch and modulation, chorus. No, I want phaser flanger. And where should I drop it in? Before the compressor? I don't know. Let's see. All right. Slow it down. They're very slow, yeah. And I'm gonna offset the phase so it's in stereo. Sounds much better like that. Yeah, you hear it moving around. It's nice, huh? It helps in the mix too. It kind of opens up the space for the hi hats that are more in the center. Yeah. This is true. Abe says I like to take my nerd time. <laughs> it's not nerd time. <laughs> and uh, nerd time is the best time. Come on, <laughs> we're all we're all nerds about something, definitely. Hey, you know, Max is in the house. What's up, Max? What were you saying, Christian? I, I could hear like um, just a stab. If you can make a stab of what, and like use a chord like, stab, or like yes, a... use it like four times in the track. That's all we need. Well, then, if, then we right. start ranging. If you were at your computer and you were saying to yourself, "I want a chord stab," what would you do? Like, what would you? What synth would you reach for? Would you go for a sample? Like, there's either way you can look at. I mean, like, uh, there's hip hop. There's a lot of cool hip hop stabs mm. from hip hop sample banks. But now, uh, as as I have you here, let, let, let's let's create a stab um, on, on a synth. Um, All right. Well, we have a couple of synths left over from the last session that we're not using for this. Okay. So I could try to find. All right. We don't want an organy sound. Something like that. Oh, there you go. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, pack it, package it really strong, you know? Like, compress the heck out of it. Yeah, crazy yeah, we have, on it. we have to. Exactly. Okay, we're getting... Let's just throw it in there and then tweak it. Yeah. Uh, what notes are those? C sharp. It's funny. We're actually composing a track that we can re that we can release. <laughs> no, but, but why wouldn't why, we? Why would we do a track that we wouldn't release? <laughs> I know, I know, no, no. It's just funny that we're streaming live and we're making a track and um, and we're talking people, about how we collaborate and people <laughs> making comments, asking questions, and it works, you know. And why it's not? Great. Yes, I love it. I do it earlier. Um, the placement. We're gonna argue boom, about boom. this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's let's see. Let's see. I think you like it, what what I'm thinking. Of. A bit a bit earlier is still completely off. Boom. Boom. This is another. This spot where we're at right now is another thing to to consider when you're collaborating. It's like whose musical idea is, you know, like what what's in your head right now. I don't know. How are you going to convey that to me, especially remotely? And if you, yeah, what it, if what if you're a person that doesn't like play instruments and you know or you're not comfortable singing it although i have to say don't be afraid to use your voice because sometimes the easiest thing to do is if you have a rhythm or a melody or an idea in your head try to do it with your voice because maybe you can't play it so easily or you're not sure how to program it but someone else does just totally sing agree. it so and I you've totally done that agree. and the other thing i used to do i remember was i would like you would be like oh i have an idea for a bass line. i'm like okay here's the keyboard just peck it out, do your best, and then we'll get it in there and then we'll fix it. So that's another thing yeah, is yeah, that yeah. your idea, you might have your idea, but like, and you're trying to convey it to your partner and it's not, it, sometimes it's better just to get close and then don't worry about how perfect it is. And then together you can decide, all right, let's move this here. Let's quantize that. Let's transpose this up. So, and that's definitely how we do it. No, you're right. Uh, communication is very important and, and being able to, um, to to uh, to explain yourself and make put your point across, but um, yeah, this comes with time. I, I would put this chord right after the the kick drum. Um, where is it? You mean on the sixteenth note, right yes, after? Yes. Yeah. Let's see. Yes. Yeah. Really? It, All right. It depends yeah, yeah, on this, the sounds this too. Gonna, this is not going to be um, a, a looping sound. We're going to use yeah. this like four times in the entire track. 
Just to break up them. How about there? That's fine too. The reason why I chose that was because there's no other sound happening on that beat. Okay. Makes sense. So it's, it's the, it sticks out more. It's not getting covered up by the heavy, distorted thing that's the main sound. Let's put a big reverb on it. Bigger than that. <laughs> that, that sounds let's, good. Let's give it its own. I mean, this isn't even mixed yet. Can we sample that? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. Um, speaking of samples, I know I don't know if this is going to work, but I just happened to have that on there. I don't know. I was thinking about tribally loopy techno recently, so. I'm not saying that we could use it, but it's it may well, be a layer cool. of percussion in there would be cool because we can play with it. Let's give it a try. All right. Why but, not? You know, that, that's the thing. You, you try all, you know, everything is worth a try. And if absolutely. it works, it works. And if not, and then put you it ditch in. It. And then and, see, the, the only thing I'm worried about is that this loop might make the track too busy. Right. And, ta and take away the, uh, some of the elements. It won't be and, as and, jacking. And the, and the Exactly, mm. but but maybe not. Let's give it a try and see right. see how it sounds. First, I'm gonna find a better reverb for this chord stab and pump it up a little bit. Like, how can we make this thing sound stronger? I mean, this sound was already like a decent, simple, like sawtoothy, you know, bright stab. So what I'm not gonna mess with it. Did you, um, what synth did you, did you use for that? Oh, it's, it's Which... Live's Wavetable. Okay. But I mean, we could use almost anything for this. Yeah, um, yeah. Wavetable's good, though, for techno because it's so sharp. It really okay. it's precise and it cuts through. Um, it doesn't sound vintage, right? Even if you do like a simple subtractive sound, it still has this modern, clean, sharp sound because it's Wavetables. Um, nice. All right. Let's pump it up a little bit with some saturation. Whoa, that's too much. Let's turn that down. Yes. Just want to be slightly brighter. And let's play around with the hybrid reverb. Big? Big, but not, not huge. Not like, you know, some, something. <laughs> yeah. Not huge, he says. Yeah. I'm just going to go through some presets. That could be good. No, but it colors the sound too much. Well, that, was, like that was all wet. See? Okay. Okay. Actually, I'm going to try it without the saturator. Maybe. No, no. You don't like it? No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not crazy about it. Better? That's better. So you like the cleaner reverse? I, li I like that. I like oh. that. Yeah, I do. I do. I do. I like the doors and stuff, but... Let's add a delay to this as well. Maybe a ping pong delay. Uh, I have one here in the, on a return. Hmm, I don't a know. A faster one. A faster one. All right. Let's try. And do, 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 do ping pong for the stereo effect. It's, it's always nice. Okay. Ping pong is a funny term for, for panning delays. Huh? Back, back and forth. Yes. Bouncing left to right. It makes sense. Yeah, of course. Oops. Fast enough? That might be might be too long. That's nice. It sounds it's messy. And yes. I think it's because of the it's so syncopated. Yeah. Let's. Um, <laughs> we don't. We don't have. Well, we don't have much time. We have half an hour. Um, try adding the drum loop, and then let's 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 try to get some kind of ar arrangement going. Yeah, I'll be honest. I don't have super high hopes that this particular loop is going to work with this groove. 
but me neither <laughs> it's just yeah but it's just it was randomly i, I had my uh, turntable set up here i was just playing around going through some old records and how old school is that <laughs> with with your 909 thank you for letting me hold on to it i know you want me to i know you want me to sell it i know and then i have this old task cam that this is also borrowed from a fr an engineer friend here in the city because mine died and then, yeah, we got the old underground resistance slip mat on the 1200s. Like, this is like 90s techno on a table. And then, actually, I want to point out one more thing. I got this as a gift from my wife. This is a little zippered bag. And the, the picture, this is like a toy synthesizer that I had when I was a little kid in the 70s. It's called Amigo Muson. So, this is like, <laughs> it's an, I love having this around as a little reminder of what that was really like what got me started with like playing with synths was when I was like five or six years old having this little toy synth. So anyway, what were that, so I, I, I threw a, I found this random white label and I, I, that's where this loop came from. This is stolen. This is from someone else's record. Just letting everybody know. Yeah. Yeah. But they sampled it as well. You know, <laughs> well, so, right. We're, we're, we're sampling a sample basically. Exactly. So there's probably a little bit too much going on in this loop. Like if it was just the hand percussion without the hi-hats, it might work better. Yeah, but you know what? You can just sidechain it heavily. Well, I was also it, thinking it about depends, you know? if it's just the, the texture exactly. of it. Yes, yes. I mean, we'll see. Exactly. All right. Let's I'm going to try it first with... But does it work with the other stuff? It works by itself. Well, well, put, put, it, put it with the, the sword and stones. Not... Oh, that's, that's not fine. important. It's, it's the other one. <laughs> it doesn't. It's a different it style now, right? It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't like it anymore. It's like it works, but it's a whole different direction. How about of, that? Um... this? We're going to do another track with the same drums in this. And a whole new synth on top. Sure. All right. So that we got two tracks started. Let's well, check let's in with uh, the chat before I, before we do a little bit more work. Sure, sure, we sure. We acknowledge our friends here in the chat. Oh, of course. This is the halfway point. Any, 343 any Labs, 343 TV, Techno Saturdays with Christian Smith and yours truly uh, together again, collaborating. Don't forget to join uh, the... Uh, giveaway if you haven't already for the Artari Artoria effects plugin of your choice. Check out our Discord. Join the community there. We we do sample challenges. We do other events. You can get feedback on your music. You can meet like-minded producers. You can talk about collaborating. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And uh, check out our links for uh, 343 Labs, both in New York and in Berlin for info on our upcoming courses. And now. Let's see what's going on in the chat real quick. Shelly Johansson asks, what if you use the loop as a fill before the drops so it doesn't make it too busy, like Christian said? That's a good question. Now, I think we're probably not going to use that in this track, but that is true. It doesn't have to loop all the time. Sometimes you could just right, throw it in for a bar Bonsters. as a change and then take it away. That Hi, Shelly. <laughs> very, very well could work. Is that someone you know? Yes, yes, yes. She's um, she's a up-and-coming producer, has released on... Uh, Octopus, nice. and, uh, I think Bedrock, a bunch of labels, and a very good DJ as well awesome. from, Tor from Toronto. Well, yeah, welcome, Shelly. Thanks for joining us today. And, and you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get to meet and talk about music one day. Um, let's see, what else is going on here? Simple Sam asks, could it work if you only use the high part of the loop? Possibly, but we already have a lot of high-frequency percussion. Exactly, exactly. So, we don't yeah, need it'll anymore. fit in the mix better, and it won't interfere with the bass and the chord, but... Let's just try it real quick just to satisfy the question. So. I'm, I've totally forgotten which. <laughs> there it is. Kind of does it. 
but you're right. It doesn't interfere as much. But then it's sort of a taste thing. Like, do you like it? And do we need it? But let's do without it for now. You cool. know what? I, I, I had one idea okay. for this loop. What if you use the very last part of the loop? And just cut the rest ah, out. Ah, shorter the loop. Two, two last notes. Dun, dun. The, the last two. two um... No, no, no. Not like that. No, no, no. Um, you play the whole oh, loop. Oh, cut it. But you play the whole loop. Yes, you cut it. You just... The, you hear the two low ones. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Yes. Kind of like that. But Let's filtered, see. maybe. Yep, exactly. Filtered. I automated the the wrong thing. Sorry, I used the the track volume instead of the clip volume. Let me fix that because that don't do that. <laughs> it's really annoying. Um, we want to go clip gain. That's what we want. All right, that makes sense. It works, right? But. But no, still no. <laughs> right. Like, we'll have it to. It works. We'll have to. I, there. It might be that we want some kind of other percussive element and an element in here at some point. But uh, let's yeah, let's this, go this, ahead this, without it. This makes this makes it too housey as well. Got it. it. That's the know. other thing we want. Yeah. Like banging. We don't. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Let's move on. Let's um. Let's get started with the arrangement. So some it's funny we're getting all these different opinions about whether the loop works or not in the in the chat. The chat's collaborating good. with us. Exactly. <laughs> uh, good. Why not? I, I did you this know? last week. I actually had some people give me some ideas to try in this electro thing that I started, and they they, they gave uh, they gave me some uh, some texts for to say to the vocoder and okay. stuff like that because I always get stuck on that. I, I got uh, terrible do, with lyrics. <laughs> you are. You are. You, you're way too critical with yourself. You know? Yeah, it's like... but it's part of it. Like when it comes out and I'm happy with it, then I, great. If it if I don't love it, then why why do it? Yeah. Do it if you like it. Um, cool. So should we just lay this out in the arrangement view and see what we can do in the next uh, 15 minutes maybe? Yeah, yeah. Just get, get started at least, you know? All right. I'm just going to go ahead and... That's enough. Um, back to arrange. Let's also, there's a bunch of sounds in here that we're not using. I'm gonna save this under another name so we don't lose all those elements. And let's just get rid of everything that we're not using. Uh, the loop is still there, just why, why not? Um, I accidentally recorded some automation there. Uh, you can see also on this main sound, It's using clip automation to control when that reverb send hits that downbeat. So that automatically recorded everything into the arrangement. We have to remember to copy this when we arrange. Um, but let's do, let's do, that's eight bars, right? That's good. We're gonna do subtractive arranging. We'll take these eight bars and then just duplicate them out. Oops. Dead air, Christian. <laughs> How long do we want to do this? Uh, five minutes. Okay, five minutes. There it is. So How are we starting? Let's start. Should we start with just the drums? Should we start with uh, the, well, the chord sure stab all, early? All, like what? No, no chord stab. We leave that for later. Uh, no hi hats. Um, Right. But the main oh, yeah, hook that just the, these guys. that just, that that's uh, distorted sound that should be in there from the very beginning, but filtered down. Sure. Okay. And and that was what we played with first. That's kind of the main moving thing, right? The main thing yes, to yes, automate. Yes. And, uh, yes. Is that still soloed? It is. All right. Definitely no rides have got to go. Yeah. Exactly. No hi hats. With all these tracks. There's way more tracks than it seems. All right. There's the. Ride. We have two short hi hats. Let's get rid of those. And then 
is the, the upbeat 909, the typical techno 909 hi-hat. Actually, there's two of them, aren't there? There's a clap. Yeah, we, we don't need the clap in the beginning. Just like that, so it's a dawn, you know? Yes, perfect. Filter it up slowly, but not all the way. Maybe like 30% over like one minute's time. We're like doing what we always do. <laughs> Yeah, and I would say at at the club coming up, I can't I can't see where, but here, on to, here, yes. Yeah, I like adding automatic uh, automation breakpoints as we listen, almost like I'm just turning a knob because yes. I didn't yes. take the time. I you could also just map a knob, but I didn't do that. Don't open it all the way. No, it's not yet. It's going like halfway. Okay. okay, good. We'll go back down a little bit. Yes. We'll and come down. Uh, there, there we need a, a Hyatt at that point. Maybe drop one? on the kick. Um, <laughs> There's so many. Not, not, not the open. And maybe. And, and not the open and maybe drop out the. Uh, that's good, yes. And, okay. and drop out a kick drum. So unique. But that clap kind of sticks out too much there, doesn't it? Do you know what I would do? Uh, this is um, Phil. No, yeah, a reverse clap. Oh well, then all right, we have to bounce the audio there, but uh, that's the easiest way to do it, right? Yeah. Um, if I, I mean, I, I can. Oh, or, or, or just add a clap. Whatever, just something to. Uh, the easiest thing to do in this instance would be to add a reverb onto the clip. Well, there's also I, that. But when I, I, do, I do this, I, I do this a lot in my productions. Um, it might not be the most original way, but it's smooth and it sounds good. Well, what I just did was bounce, <coughs> freeze, froze the track, so it made it bounced an audio file, and then copied the frozen audio onto a new audio track. And now I'm, I'm going to unfreeze. Right. So now that that MIDI track is back. And then I have this little guy that I can reverse. Let's see if it works. Where did they move the darn reverse button to? There it is. It doesn't say reverse anymore. It's just... uh, and it's reversed. Where did okay, it go? No, right placements. Yeah, except. Oh, that sounds good. Yes. Yes. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Good suggestion. All right, the, the, the base, the filter's going down. It's going the wrong direction. Hi, it's another one. Right there, right yes. where we set it. This, oh, 41. Yes, I can't. Another I can't one, see. or uh, <laughs> there's a couple. There's the fast ones, and then there's the open. I don't know. The open. Which That's it says open. right. Just ignore that. I renamed. I named okay. the wrong clip. <laughs> Yeah. Open the. Um, this is good, but also the close. Put on the close at the same oh, time. Oh, same time? Both of them? Yeah, because it gives a really good uh, rhythm, I think. No? It's good. good. Now drop the filter. Really? Yeah, man. I mean, like. <laughs> Suddenly, think, or because that's yeah, a funny place to do it. All right, let, let's listen to uh, it from uh, here. Uh, what, 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 okay. So at forty nine. You don't think it's too soon? Yeah. Nope. I 
and then we and then we add in something else. The, 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 key, the key thing, no, no, no. Listen to me, because we don't have many elements in this track. You have to keep it need, changing a lot. Yes, we need to stay dynamic, and one way of doing that is by by changing the filter the whole time. Right. You know, if you would have uh, 20, 30 different parts, which I never do, and I, and I personally don't like making tracks like that, um, then you can just add many things. But sure. um, I prefer changing things, going going up and down. And it's, it's, and you know what? It works. It's like the energy is just peaking and everybody's just getting into it. And then it drops. It's cool. It's, it's something, you know, because you know it's going to come back and it will. So That said, I agree with all of that. The timing is crucial. <laughs> Yes, for, correct. If correct. you're going to make a sudden change, it can't happen at the wrong moment. So what I just did, I'm, I'm, I'm. He made that suggestion to suddenly take the filter down. I'm going to also suddenly take the kick drum out and see if that contrast contrast okay. works. Because and then we can, when the kick drum comes back and the filter comes back up, it's going to be even. It's going to feel more powerful than it did. So, all right, let's see. Even maybe do that. Yep. Where does the stab go? At the very end of uh, of that break, if you call it break. Oh, yeah. well, okay. So that means I think that's, the timing of it is going to be different than we originally yeah, planned. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what. It is. It's funny. It's no, it's not good. See, that, I, I kind of saw that coming. Like that doesn't look like it's <laughs> in the right place. It's also so, not big enough to be one by itself somehow. So let's let's put it a little bit to the right, uh, towards the end of the break, in a, in a better placement, and maybe put a bigger reverb on it. All right. Hmm. Also, what if we I, start it here and filter it down? And then build it up, and then the last one has a big lot Wusha reverb on it, and then it goes away. You want to have several stabs. But but look, hear me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm. I'm so, yeah. Uh, uh, I could do it in the synth, but it's faster if I use the filter. I'm sorry, the auto filter or EQ. We'll just do the auto filter. By the way, we're gonna finish this track today. See what I'm getting at? That's good. Yeah, I'm. I'm I, and then I, and then and then it's it's gonna that's only gonna be in the part where the rides come in and then it stops. I did. I did not envision us doing this at all, but I'm not. I'm I'm fine with that. As long as the filter is open or that one. Yeah. Ah, well, let's see. Let's see. That's good. I missed the chord now. <laughs> no, I, I think what it needs is um, more feedback on the delay on the uh, on the very on the very last chord. You know, it needs right. to bl blend in longer, and that'll do it. All right, lead automation. Oh, which one of these is? Right. So the 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 reverb that we picked before is pretty dark and not that long. So maybe we need a different reverb that's really spacey and long. Okay, okay. And I Let's can do just, that. The ones that I ha have in the return here, I'm not even sure if we're using them all. I'm just going to leave those. And we're almost down to the wire. It's 155. We're just wrapping up. Let's do this one last move. And then 
we'll uh, you know we'll wrap things up. But let's see how fast I can get this sounding cool. I'm gonna use the regular. Yeah, let's fi let's finish this small thing and then uh, we can talk exactly. a few more minutes. So, but I think the, the people get the idea how we collaborate. People, you know, do you, you get know, the like... idea? <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on now. Getting there. Bigger, and brighter. also, also longer delay. Ooh. All right, that's probably good enough for now. No. So let's, let's see. drop in that little bit of automation. Um, and now, let's see. Question. Yes. Can Can you try um, filtering uh, the main hook down? The the. Oh. the um, Oh, we're right, getting right, caught right. up in details. All right, hold that thought. It is almost two o'clock. Let's let's just we're gonna remember that. I like okay. that idea. We'll do that later. Yes, 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 yes. We're getting into it's the nitty gritty the, here. Yeah, not nitty gritty. It's it's about keeping it dynamic, right? It's like sure. otherwise it, uh, these tracks, if you don't arrange them, arrange them properly, they get boring really right. fast. You know, it's like it's it's really important to to have things um, come and go, go up and down the entire time when you have very few elements. I agree. I definitely, if it's it's really loopy like this, the sounds have yes. to evolve. And that's what really exactly. makes it work. Exactly. And uh, all right, let's look back at the chat. Actually, we must congratulate our winner today. Congratulations to Martin Gabriels. You are the winner of an Arturia FX plugin of your choice. We'll be getting in touch with you about that. So, you know, again, congratulations all around there. And... Uh, Thanks to everybody who joined in today. Great active chat, lots of good questions. Really happy to have you all here. Really glad to have Christian Smith back for the stream. And of course, you know we're gonna do this again. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, if you wanna watch the full stream, head over to studio.343labs.com, link in the description below. And that is our new producer hub where you can find free content, collaborate with other musicians, get feedback on your music, and just meet a community of like-minded artists and producers. See you next time.